welcome to the Fun House Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Haley, here with my co-host. Hey, it's me, Lindsay, you bitch. My that's bitch, how, Lindsay Washburn. This is how we intro every time. Every time. Yeah, every time. It's weird. I listened to it. I don't think I've heard this before. Don't this is my podcasting us. voice. You know, my radio voice. <laughs> that's how I usually sound. Anyway, I got my special guest here, James Willow. Why don't you get a soundboard? <laughs> you should go full should. radio show with this and just let well, Ryan do. Like, I have the yeah. real answer. I'm building the podcast room. So who do you think is going to make a soundboard? Were you, because you you're going to build it into yeah. the room. It sounds like you answered your own question. I'm excited about the soundboard. I'm definitely excited about the funhouse room. And I'm we're not going to have this terrible, garish, whatever the Maybe. hell we is, could is buy, We're probably going to need to bring it in, because the room is probably going to first become just operational uh-huh. before it becomes aesthetic. So we are just going to keep that in mind. I actually am doing it the opposite way. Aesthetics before yeah. operational? Yeah. I'm before trying to make it look nice for you guys, for the viewers out there on the YouTubes. Nice. Nice. Um, James, I'm so happy that you're here with us on the Thanks, podcast. Brian. Happy to be here. I'm indifferent. I haven't been here since February when I, I did right. uh, Cupid trivia. And, well, oh, yeah. you well, you also <laughs> made a stop. No, I'm sorry, you didn't make it. You, you made a guest cameo video, I believe, with mm. your breakdown of where, WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, which we played. Everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, of oh. course. But I wasn't actually physically here. That's true. Now, James, you know, when, when the cameras aren't rolling, when it's just me and you hanging out like dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bros. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh, ninety percent of what we talk about is our hands movies. in each other's pockets. Uh, well. What? <laughs> the, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, movies. the movies. The movies. You yeah, love yeah. movies. You love movies. I love movies. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm indifferent. Lindsay's the indifferent. Movies? To you don't movies. like movies? Yeah. Lindsay, Depends. what's your favorite movie? I like TV shows. That's, okay, but yeah. what's your favorite movie? I don't know. Well, you can spend the one whole podcast. Oh, about no, that. a new one came into last year. It's I don't know. It's I loved everything everywhere. That became okay. like a top, top five. Oh, yeah. okay. Did Can you say one work? fine day by George, with George Clooney and yeah. Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer? She loves romantic comedies, uh, and it's uh, one of the best. All oh, films. Well, my favorite rom com is You've Got Mail. Come on. Which is also, okay. I think, one of the best. Which yeah. is a uh, better version of, of Sleepless in Seattle. No, of the shop around the, the corner. Shop around the corner. With James Stewart, your namesake. Kind of, yeah. My yeah. voice sake. <laughs> well, well, where are we going to do with a shot? Oh my God, where are we going to put it? You're way too Around the that. corner. <laughs> so I just figured, you know, um, I wanted to have you on and kind of just like, you know, it, it's we're going to act like, you know, the cameras aren't even here. It's like basically just us having a movie discussion like we normally would. Oh, okay, all right. Then, then I would probably discussion. walk away. No, no, no. no. You have to be, you can get back to working on the podcast. Room. No, no, no. <laughs> Similar to our Survivor segment, you're forced to be here for the duration and uh, just. Well, the podcast, the Survivor segment is 10 minutes usually. So. Yeah, no, this is just will be four times that long. That's all. This whole, um, this is doing a movie podcast. I feel well, tricked. we're doing a general movie podcast, but then also I have a couple gamified things, you okay. know. So okay, I like that. We're going to sprinkle right, we'll it in. It, it, you'll be able to play along. You don't want to ask me about my life and career. I mean, that's what I wanted to do, but. Life and career. That's for the James Pod. That's for later on in the programming uh, schedule. Oh, you know? oh, of this show. Of this show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, We've yeah. already had the John Pod, the Rick Pod, the Gotcha. Pod. This is an this informal pod, pod where I am a guest. This is the James movie pod. You know, um, where well, we... let me ask you, am I on the thumbnail? You'll definitely be on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a James pod. But we put your head on, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Or a movie body. thing, yeah. Or James Lipton. Or a, on the or, poster of, like, Terminator. Or a person, a tiny body, but it's driving a car and it's holding a tennis racket. Sure. Uh, James can design thumbnail. Um, what, what everyone, the- everyone, at, every, how far in are we? We're like, like maybe We're four minutes. Four minutes in, and people are going like, "Oh, that's why the thumbnail looked that way." <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things I appreciate you and your um, uh, your movie thoughts is you have very. Uh, Judgmental. An- analytical mind. Oh, thank you. You know, like for me, when I watch a movie, like like we'll like leave a movie and essentially I've just kind of let it wash over mm-hmm. me. I've absorbed the movie, just kind of been like, well, I was entertained by that, you know, and I could probably have a little discussion, but you seem to immediately just be like, have already analyzed it and know all, you know, like, oh, that was cool how that motivate that character's motivation and themes yeah. and worked in together. Like you you you're in real time analyzing the script mm-hmm. and everything, which you I find say impressive. That James is more critical than you. He, he he yes critical critical in the sense that Analytical. I I I criticize it but not necessarily negatively sure. not like necessarily I, like I, a cynic. when I'm watching movies I am breaking them apart mm. and trying to assess their elements that sounds really exhausting but I'm not necessarily critical it doesn't mean that I can't just enjoy movies absolutely yeah. I was actually on the toilet the other day and I, I was thinking that. of a concept 
which is what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of a concept, uh, which is that, and this is specifically for all media, but media can be fun and media can be good. But fun doesn't necessarily mean good. I agree. And good doesn't necessarily mean fun. Right. But they can be both. Yeah. So mm. uh, only because I know that Fast X is coming out or whatever. And I can't get into that franchise. Okay. Be but I'll admit that it appears fun, but it's terrible. Yeah. Yes. It's not good, uh -huh. but it's fun. And that's okay. It sits in the fun camp. I don't like when people conflate the two. And not they go, right, because right, right. it's fun, it's good. No, no, no. Two different things. Mm -hmm. Two different things entirely. Sometimes they overlap. I think everywhere, everything everywhere all at once is fun and, and good. good. Yeah. And I think that's how you get yes. amazing things. But 100% agree. And it, well, I always have the problem, the kind of reverse problem, what you just said, where, you know, I've watched so many, I don't know, uh, art films mm -hmm. over the years, and I love them, but like, I always love the ones that, yeah, are. Objectively good, like well crafted, but mm -hmm. also I had a great time watching it. Yeah, yeah. And there are so many movies that I've seen, you know, at film festivals or whatever. It's like, okay, yeah, this was objectively good. I get, I, yeah. I, I, I get why it's great, but boy, did I not like have the best time watching I, it. And I don't love that. That genre. I haven't seen it, but the when I think of good, not fun, uh -huh. Marriage Story. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> haven't like seen it, but I can only imagine <laughs> that movie is probably pretty good. Not very fun. I, oh. Well, see, that, that's a weird example because you're probably right. I, I, I've seen uh, most of it, and it, it I was like, it was fun in the sense that You've seen like, most of it. Yeah, I fell you asleep. You didn't finish it. I fell asleep oh. at home. It that doesn't fun. sound fun. It wasn't I fun. started it too late. I'm sorry. I'm narcoleptic <laughs> after ten. Uh, uh, but then I, I Noah Bombax, a filmmaker, where I do have fun, like just seeing how he's moving the camera, do it. Like mm -hmm. his filmmaking technique to me is fun to watch, even when it's about dramas, you know. Yeah, but maybe you're conflating good and fun. I don't maybe know. Maybe it's am. not fun. It's not maybe fun it's in good the traditional filmmaking. sense because it's literally about a divorce, which is sad. <laughs> but it's still. But like... to me, fun filmmaking is like if the camera goes through like a pipe. <laughs> and you're like, how do they do that? Like in the Mario movie. Like in the Mario movie or whatever. Or it comes out of an exhaust pipe and then uh -huh. goes up and then rolls over Vin Diesel's head and you're like, okay. oh, okay, whatever. This is stupid and I hate whatever. I don't know what they're chasing or why and I don't care. Mm. But did you see how it came out of the exhaust pipe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's ask That's some, what I think. Let's ask some of these ge just general movie questions, okay. you know, and then um, then we're going to get into the more gamified part aspects of this pod. Okay. Um, he goes, is this my favorite movie or a movie I made up? <laughs> oh, I would love <laughs> that. Was that was a band yeah. game that he made once. That'd be pretty game. good. <laughs> um, let's start with, uh, what kind of films do you not like to watch? I mean, I don't know that there is necessarily a specific genre for that. I am not, I don't love gore. Okay. For the sake of it. You're missing out. I'll watch a ton of movies that are, we talked about Evil Dead Rise, uh -huh. but really enjoyed it. But I felt like, again, it was part of a good movie. Like it was an asset of good movie. There are some movies that are just like shocking for the sake of shocking. What's that I don't care that? about. Hostel, like Hostel kind of shit? Hostel 1, I would say, has somewhat of a compelling plot, and I have seen it. But like Hostel 2, like once it started just relishing in like the chaos of it. I haven't seen like Saw 3 through basically all the rest, right? Well, yeah, because there. it felt like they leaned more and more into the shock value of what they could come up with. Right. And so I don't I don't necessarily feel like I need to sit through those movies, though I am interested in them. I call them wiki movies. Movies where you can just read the Wikipedia and basically oh. get it because whatever you picture in your mind is probably going to be okay. more yeah. shocking and compelling than what the actual movie conveys. Yeah. Solo. Have you ever seen Solo? 120 Days of Sodom, of course. Lindsay, Be best you love movie film. Ever have you ever seen Haters Solo? Films. I mean, which which time have I seen it? You're disgusting. Yeah, it's <laughs> filthy, and I can't believe you. No. You'd watch no. it more than once. It's What's one of those things where, like, I have okay, no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> that movie is mostly boring. Yeah, it's with sucks. flashes of grotesqueness to shock you. I know it's an allegory, but it's still like you can read the Wikipedia for that film. It's about fascism and man. get everything. You can get everything. From oh, the Wikipedia. I, well, I I disagree with that. And that for that film, I mean, you can get everything in the sense that you know what happened. Yeah. But but I mean, that movie pissed me off to be honest. Like in the sense that 
you know, you're, just spoiler alert for solid. I was going to say, I feel like you should elaborate on some of these films that you might mention that aren't mainstream not pop mainstream. culture. It's a basically movies. a bunch of bourgeoisie people who have all the money in the world, and they're just the only way they can get off is essentially being okay. It's terrible. Terrible. They round up, they round up a possible. bunch of young children. peasants, not children. I mean, they're like. They're like 16 okay, yeah, to 18 yeah. or whatever. And the actors are clearly like 18 or whatever. Sure, but yeah, like yeah. the idea is that they're like in their mid-teens to older or whatever. And they just they, get tortured. They basically. round them up from the, the rural countryside and then they just bring them to this big mansion where they just have, they just torture them. But not even in like the way you think of a modern film, like a Saw type film. It's just mostly boring. They're mostly sitting around, and then they'll be like, "Let's have dinner," and they go, "Here's your dinner." It's to like this, bowl of fingers to this it's Italian guy, and it's just oh. a bowl of shit. And they're like, mm, "Enjoy," and then they shovel shit into their mouths. And yeah. that's the part where I was actually gagging, going, "Fuck this movie!" <laughs> you yeah. know, um, I'm sure it's for someone, but it's like it's nothing. It leads. It really needs leads to nothing. It is. It does make a point about fascism, and right. it is an allegory for all of that and what happened in Italy and the beginning of World War II, et cetera, et cetera. But sucks. It's not fun to watch. Me telling you this, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. Well, let's move on from movies you don't like. Let's okay. move to movies you do like. What is, uh, if you can, narrow it down to one or two. What was profound cinema experience? Like, really had an effect on you. Uh, when you left the theater, you're like, that is a fucking movie. Uh, this is funny. funny answer, but Con Air. Okay, hell yeah. Go my, on. My dad took me to see I was Con Air. say, how old were you? Pretty, pretty young. The, the first rated R movie I ever saw was Super Cop. Jackie Chan? In theaters, yeah, Jackie cool. Chan, which is, I don't know, I still don't know why it's rated R. But I remember it being, violence. I remember it being a thing that it was like, oh, we're going to go see a rated R movie. Like, are you okay with that? Uh -huh. And I'm going, hell yeah. And we went, and I was like, why was that rated R? There's not a single thing in that movie that happens that seems to warrant it. Anyway, um, but Con Air. Uh, I think just because, probably more so because the movie is fun. I think it's a really fun movie that e exemplifies the best time in action in film mm. is when a studio executive does a line of cocaine and then <laughs> says, and says this, but this. And it's just two things. And it's an insane concept. So jail in a plane, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. What if it's jail in a plane? And, and then you're, and, and it only makes sense if you've just done a line of cocaine. <laughs> but then ultimately, we still have those things happening now, but it doesn't matter because then they hire a visual effects company and then they just start getting work and there's nothing. Mm -hmm. This is the, the guy goes, Get me someone who can write that script, his bloodshot eyes. And then he has to find some guy who can write a script that makes sense of his inane concept. So that way there's an actual story there. And they're like, all right, well, how do we get this? Uh, they're transporting prisoners. Well, we need a good prisoner there. All right, there's this Marine who's like brought back, and he, but he goes to jail. But he's a good guy. So you have to figure out all these elements. And I think those are what make the movie really fun. But I think the reason it was a great experience for me is because I went with my dad, and we both were just like com completely bonded over loving it and like thinking it was great and like quoting Steve Buscemi and stuff the whole time. Just so I think it was just a fun experience for that. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's a good answer. That's tender. It's very tender. We then we also saw several years later, we saw The Matrix together. He took me to see The Matrix. I mm. guess I could have gone on my own, but okay. um, and then at the end of it he goes, I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> my answer is the hangover. <laughs> oh Most interesting. Part one or part two? <laughs> There's part two? How come they didn't call hangover part two the morning after? That's a good point. They could they could have called it Hangover or the dog. Part Two Plan B. <laughs> Plan B, yeah. Uh, my first rated R movie w I saw in the theater was Saving Private Ryan. My mom thought it was mm. historically, uh, you know, mm -hmm. worth it for me to be able to see naughty words for mm -hmm. that. <laughs> naughty words. It wasn't the violence, not the guts. People <laughs> scooping their guts back into their body. It was the. the I always bar. love. Here's what I love about parents. Uh -huh. What they choose. To it's be acceptable. like, this is what we need to protect our child from yeah. right, right. is like curse words. And it's like, you know your mom has cursed more in her life yeah. than you could ever imagine. Right. right. Like she's she's cursing constantly. She's around people that curse. She knows it's just a part of how we've always used language. But she's like, I just hope these curse words don't rub, rub off on my son <laughs> as the guy is walking around holding his arm. Like, what yeah. image do you think is gonna be left behind? Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, what is the hardest you've ever laughed in the movies? Mm. What movie? In a theater? 
Uh, either one. Uh, probably the hard. Uh, so at home, first time watching Wet Hot American Summer. The movie. Or the, TV the show. movie. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was good. I almost pissed my pants uh-huh. when they when they're trying to find um, Ken Marino. They know he's at camp, uh-huh. and then Janine Garofalo and Joe Latrulia are trying to find Ken Marino, but they know he's the call, and they the call came from inside the camp, and then they rush into the nurse's office, and they're just screaming, knocking things mm-hmm. over. Is honestly one of the hardest I've laughed in my entire and life. And they know he's at camp. Uh, it's yeah, been be- a while. So Ken Marino is supposed to take the kids. He was he and Joe Latruglia are supposed to take the kids out for a, a rafting trip. Okay, but then that one woman who sucks the lollipop was like, "If you come back, we'll have sex." And so he's trying to get back because he's actually a, he's secretly a virgin. <laughs> and so he at some point he flees. He like lets drops them off to go rafting and then leaves with the van. That's right, yes. But then the kids now are on the raft going down the river, and Joe Latruglia is somehow back at the camp saying, we lost him, we lost him. And so then Janine Garofalo and him are running around camp trying to find him. <laughs> um, anyway, that's the hardest I've laughed. And then probably maybe the hardest I've laughed in a theater recently that I can remember was was Jackass Forever. Forever. Yeah. I, thought you were, Watching I was that hoping you'd say that. I was dying. When did that come out? Last year. When oh. Last year? Early last year. Yeah. It's a winner. Yeah, you yeah. see that one, Lindsay? Mm-mm. It's great. I was never a big... I was a Bam, Viva La Bam. I like mm-hmm. Viva La Bam. Mm-hmm. Well, well, he's on the run now. Yeah. So. He's... One of the hardest times I ever left is when he put all the hamburgers on all of his dad's shirts. He opened his drawer and <laughs> every shirt had a hamburger on it. I, I love Viva La Bam. That was fucking funny. <laughs> but I still... I still I always <laughs> felt bad Oh, you feel for awful. Phil or whatever. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like what did they do They're to create paid. this monster? <laughs> like yeah. that... But that's that's the that's the level that was funny to me. Yeah. I didn't think it was funny when you come in and fucking smack his dad in the face every yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. But like putting a burger Harmless on pranks, every yeah. single t shirt, <laughs> yeah. you could buy him new t shirts. That was fucking funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was sixteen. It's funny. It's funny. I think I think Jackass <laughs> is some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Because uh, yeah. sometimes you can't guess, and even when you can guess, it doesn't matter. And I still think Jackass Jackass Forever was like one of several fours. Like a trilogy that had ended, that like several years later, like ten years later, they're like picking it up again. That was the only one that I felt like achieved what a f- re-entry into the franchise should be. You didn't think of Toy Story Four? Uh, th- Toy Story Four was off? it didn't it didn't do anything new. It was more Toy Story, and I thought mm-hmm. Toy Story Three was a is is arguably better than Four, and was a greater send off for those characters. Yeah. Than four was. There was no. You didn't need to tell any more story there. I thought it was fine, but it wasn't especially great. And I thought Matrix Four sucked. Oh yeah, that was awful. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'm trying. I think there was something else. I think this is maybe also when Scream Five came out, and I hated oh, Scream Five. Right. So yeah, there were a lot of these movies that they were like, we're picking up the threads of this dead franchise. And Jackass 4. was the Jackass was the only one where I was like, this is exactly what I wanted, but I couldn't guess what it was because they put that extra layer of thought into it. Totally. Where I couldn't predict it. Jackass forever. Fucking rules. I do wish Bam was in it. That's the only thing that can make it maybe a little better, but. Well, if he wasn't so. I know. Toxic. <sighs> yeah. I agree. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, you ever cry at the movies, James? And if so, hardest you ever cried at a movie? Mm. Saddest. And, and again, ever are we made talking you? in theaters or uh, either movie? Either, either, way. either or. I mean, I just saw Guardians Volume Three, oh, and no, while I didn't cried. cry, I did do the th- where t- sometimes there's a difference between the tears actually leaving and the thing in your throat. Yeah. yeah. And I had the thing in my throat for a lot of those scenes in that movie. Because of the animal oh. uh, cruelty. I haven't seen it. It's, there's some there's some emotional Don't stuff. I mean, there, no, there's just like their, their whole family dynamic of them, and then also, yeah, like just Rocket Raccoon is such a tender character. Um, so there's a, there's definitely a lot of stuff in that movie that I felt like got me. Mm-hmm. The hardest I've probably cried watching a movie is it sucks, but it was a Richard Gere film called Hachi: A Dog's Tale. I okay. think we've talked about this before oh, yeah. in a video. Not necessarily the three of us, but we've talked about it before in a video. It's a the movie sucks. Okay, it's a <laughs> That's it's a yeah, movie he's... about that dog in the I think Shinjuku district or whatever of Japan. Remember that dog? There's a statue of a dog in Japan, okay. in Tokyo. I don't know this. And uh, I'm looking up there's this. this dog Hachi, 
and oh well, this just looks sad. Yeah, yeah. So there's this dog Hachi, and the actual the actual story is that there was this man who would always go to work with his dog. They'd walk together, and then the dog would wait for him at the station to come home from his job. <laughs> and they did that every single day. And then at one one point, the man went to work, got on the train, went to work. I can't. Oh no, I don't want to. And had cry. a heart attack and died. <laughs> and so he never came back. And the dog waited. Oh, I hate it! Oh. <laughs> and so then the dog just waited there for him to return. It's like those Simpsons and, episode. And basically became like homeless, a homeless dog. People started feeding. They knew what ha- people knew what happened. They would feed the dog, and but the dog would just always be there, just waiting by the train station. I'm so upset. <laughs> and then they finally I'm so, getting you. Yes. They so finally fuck. animated his corpse to come so, back and walk so, home. So when the dog finally passed away, they made a little statue for the dog. And if you go there oh. in Tokyo, there's a statue for the dog, and people will rub his nose and stuff. Um, and so they made a movie on that story, but adapted for. American audience, so it's Richard Gere so in like bullshit. a small town or whatever. Most of the, most of the movie sucks. It sucks. Like it's cheesy. It's like Hallmark quality yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Um, but then, yeah, the entire second half is about this dog <laughs> just waiting at the train station, and it, that isn't necessarily the saddest part. There's also because like Richard Gere had a wife, and she's like, oh, like maybe we should. But the dog would run away, he'd move, and the dog would run away and go back to the train station. But then there's a point, there's a time skip in this movie where it skips ahead to now the dog is old and has been doing this for like 10 years. Oh, no. And is like living under, like on the tracks next to this train station and is an old Stop, dog that I don't would hear walk, walk <laughs> out and just be tired. And they found the <laughs> oldest, tiredest looking dog I've ever seen that looked exactly like my dog when I was a, like a oh, teenager or whatever. From. And I mean, it's sad regardless. You don't need I'm to- I'm already too you, emotional Lindsay, this for, all, for our audio it's listeners, right. Lindsay is literally bawling her eyes but the out dog, No, I'm just screen. tearing up a little bit. The dog Fuck. looked identical to my dog it's as a so... teenager. When he was old, and it's 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 terrible. It's hard. It's so hard to watch. <laughs> wow, it's so hard. hard to watch. But it's the thing. It's the worst thing story. is, I was hard the, to hear. the story is that we were, <laughs> Elise and I were watching it, and then she was like, I gotta, yeah, I gotta go. so she got up, and then she came back, and when she came back, I was oh no, just complete. I was she couldn't console me in any way and she was uh, she was like what happened and I then she looked at the screen she was like oh no and so like but, but she left whenever the guy had a heart attack she missed the, no the she part? saw she knew the concept of the movie oh, but yeah. it hadn't done the time skip forward to him oh, being man. an old oh. dog tired and God. and stuff and still waiting and so but we had just been like this is this movie sucks like this movie sucks agreeing it she was like yeah it sucks got up walked away came back 10 minutes later and I'm an emotional wreck so oh, God. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, that was a good answer to that question. Yeah. Um, I wish it was something better, though. No, that's a great answer. Um, yeah. Uh, one more question before we break. Uh, um, scaredest you've ever been in a movie. Real fear. I know that, I, I mean, we always talk about it. You pee your pants a lot. I always movies. pee my pants. Yeah. But it's like a, it's like an octopus. It's defensive. <laughs> it's, so it's I not, it's not an accident. It's yeah. not an accident. To be clear, it's not an accident. Yeah, I, I, it's I, defensive. I, I, I use learned it that when I grabbed your popcorn one time uh-huh. and all. Yeah. I got a face full of it. Yeah, yeah. Face? You're yeah. grabbing it with I your mouth? I missed him. <laughs> I, can, I can fire it in <laughs> several different ways. <laughs> so what's your answer to the question? Great question. Um, I... There's several scenarios. So I saw uh, Event Horizon when I was very young. Okay, the, I remember the Paul I W.S. Anderson uh, mm-hmm. joint. Yeah, and I remember Lawrence Fishburne. I remember going to see it when I was pretty young because it was like in theaters. I don't know how or why I ended up there, but mm-hmm. I ended up seeing that, and I remember thinking that was very scary. But then also as a kid, I saw Bram Stoker's Dracula. And cool. for the next probably six months, slept with a thing around. My, like I would go to bed and I would wrap like a in blanket a around my neck, just so that I was like, if a vampire is going to try and bite me, they're going to wake me up trying to take this thing uh, off. Yeah, I don't have access. Of course, and then of course. Starts, then I'll be able to <laughs> swat it or whatever. You do um, that instead of just coating your neck in garlic. Yeah, I didn't have access to garlic in oh, that way. Interesting. Mm. Um, this seemed less invasive. So th- those are definitely two younger ones. Uh, as an adult, there was a while where I was working at a post-production house doing QC on movies. And it involved basically sitting where I am now, 
with 5.1 headphones on and then probably like a, you know, 60 inch TV directly in front of me. That's how I would like QC these movies. Uh And it would be in a completely dark room, like a cubicle. And I do remember watching, what is the the first, their names are so uh, confusing, but it is the first James Wong movie with the red face demon. Fuck. He's like, like his kid goes into a coma, tiptoe through the window. Damn it, anyway, movie. whatever that, whatever that movie is. Oh, wait, Conjuring? No, not Conjuring. Insidious. He, Insidious. Okay, there you go. It was Insidious. So I remember watching the first Insidious, starring Future Elise. Starring Future Elise. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Starring Future Elise. Um, <laughs> uh, I was like, I was like Patrick Wilson. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so but what the condition? It's I think it's a good scary movie. Mm. But the conditions of watching it with nothing. So if something's scary, I'll just do like this. Like as long as I put like a layer between me right. and the screen. Or if you're watching something in a the theater and you can still see seats in front, like nothing's gonna pop out. Mm. But when you're sitting like this and the screen is directly in front of your face or whatever, there's it just feels you feel very vulnerable. So okay. that was a pretty frightening. Experience. Insidious while you were. Q seeing, seeing it in a dark it. room with <laughs> headphones on. That's another thing. Headphones, like you can't oh, cover your he- oh, ears yeah. or anything like that. You're like immersed in it in a certain way. Man, I just been thinking about how I have answers for all these questions that are TV shows. You should <laughs> What's be the throwing them out, TV Lindsay. Show? Well, I'll say we can talk about that at some point, too. I was going to say the last time that, or one of the most recent times that I was super scared at a TV show was watching Stranger Things last summer. It was way scarier than I thought it was going to be. Mm, mm, like, because it was always like, oh, that's weird and yeah, kind of yeah. creepy. But it, like, went straight to, like, like intensity. Like, the Chrissy stuff, that show was scary. Yeah. My, <laughs> my, my stuff, I think the things that scare me are not jump scares, those don't uh-huh. count, because those are just natural reactions. But things when you're like, something is going to be there, there's a lot of stuff now on like TikTok and Instagram Reels. Oh my God, that's actually the most like recent Where it's like the face time. stuff, or it's like, it's like, it's a shot of Ryan, and then it's a shot of the TV Ryan's watching, and then it's a shot of Ryan and he goes like, like what's that? And then it cuts back to the TV, and the TV is fine, but there's someone behind the TV. Like yeah. that shit, which is like I don't count as jump scares. Those are like okay, you created a dramatic tension uh-huh. there, and you also like it requires my senses to find what is terrifying about that. Those are those I, are very scary. I'm getting goosebumps because you're just making me think of the doppelganger one I just saw on TikTok where the stairs. Somebody comes in oh. with like a the, the groceries or something, and he's like, "I got milk," and he puts the milk down, and the guy in the kitchen's like, "Cool, thanks," and then they just show the same clip again. But like a little, it's a little bit different. It goes, oh, I got the milk, and the guy's like, cool. And then it cuts to like a doorway, and the doorway is dark, and they're just like really tiny red eyes. That that oh, stuff is good. I hate that shit. That's not see, but that's I the hate thing. It. But that to me is like really scary. And it was stuff. like eleven thirty. I was like, nope, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> Stranger Things, I feel like, is intense. Like there are moments of intensity. Yes. I'm like, oh, I'm worried for those characters, but I don't, I don't associate that as much with fear. But I think, well, I think it's because, like, yeah, that's what I associate in general. But but they kicked it off with like the Chrissy stuff and it being like weird and like mm, yeah, yeah, creepy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it like mellowed out, and I understood what to expect. But I was shocked because I wasn't expecting the like extreme departure into How like far it went. This is really creepy. Yeah, yeah, bones breaking and stuff. And then I was fine later. Oh yeah, yeah that stuff. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. I checked out after season one. Not to say that uh, I'll probably go back at some point. I think you can it skip season l- two. It was a little bit season like this. one. I thought was good. Then season two was not. Yeah. And then I enjoyed yeah. season three a lot. And okay. this last one was season four, right? Well, y'all, we're gonna take a break and watch all of season three and four of Stranger Things. But uh, you guys can take a uh, ad break right now and watch these sponsors that make the show happen. Thank you. Hey everyone, we wanted to take a moment to remind you that RTX 2023 is happening this July 7th through July 9th. RTX is our favorite time of the year where we get to interact with all the amazing people that give us the opportunity to make content like this. It's a celebration of all things Rooster Teeth with panels, special guests, community artists, cosplay, and more. There will be exclusive reveals, mean greets with Rooster Teeth talent, and special merch available only during the event. We're changing up how the convention feels this year, and it's going to be awesome. 
Imagine a mini Epcot-style convention show floor with different attractions and activations from your favorite Rooster Teeth brands all wrapped up in a summer camp theme. It's the summer camp for indoor kids with Face Jam's Rat and Grackle Pub, a Red Web Escape Room, a Fuck Face Museum, Achievement Hunter Mini Golf, tons of stuff Fun House is doing. I can't even tell you all the cool stuff we have playing. It's so cool. I don't want to ruin it, but I, I do want to ruin it, but I'm not going to. And guess what? Even more cool stuff to do that we're saving for attendees to experience. Thanks for listening to us get very excited about RTX. We're looking forward to meeting all of you there. Head on over to rtxaustin.com to get more information about the event and buy your badge. Welcome back, James, to the James Movie Discussion pew, 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 pew. And Lindsay interjecting TV yeah, stuff. Interjecting TV stuff. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to get to the gamified part of this. We've kind of got some, we've, you know, we've basically you hit, all the, we've yeah, hit all the emotions. Now you got to calibrated the systems. Every emotion you yeah, can yeah. hit in, in a movie theater. We've yeah, kind yeah. of uh, narrowed it down to a couple movies. Um, now, Elise gave me a great idea, and she told me, she's like, Ryan, for the movie discussion pod, you should just get James to say a year, and then we're going to basically uh, narrow down it. your top three movies of that year. Okay. You know, based on that. I don't have the encyclopedia, so like you have, have to tell I me what movies here. came it's out okay. in the years. I have, I have, I have a Some website. people do that where they're like, ah, oh, Jurassic Park, I 1991 or whatever. I'll be, I'll be throwing movies out, so get, get, give me a year, and then we'll get Lindsay to give a year. Uh, I definitely want the 90s. I okay. feel like we were riding high. Let's go 95, right? Now. 95, okay. Any off the, the top of your head that nope. you remember? Nope, because I don't. my brain don't work that way. Okay, well, 95, let's see. We got the number one movie of the year that year was Die Hard with a Vengeance. Good movie. We had okay. Toy Story 1 that came out the year. Toy Story 1? Golden Eye. Movie. Oh, Dis- baby. Disney's, Disney's See, Pocahontas. The 90s, the 90s, man. You can look at it too with me. Apollo 13. We got yeah. seven. Waterworld, your Why favorite are you ride. It from Lindsay? Show it to Lindsay. Ju- Casper! Jumanji. I skipped out Casper. Casper. The Friendly Ghost oh, Casper movie. Oh, okay. Uh, Babe. Seven. With oh, your namesake, James Cromwell. Um, Ace Ventura when Nature Calls. Holy shit, this is Braveheart. a big brave part. Outbreak. Heat. This is not what movies look like now, and we're I not going to look back on 2023 okay, and grandpa. be like, "Look at this year." Well, There's no way. It, I agree. I mean, honestly, uh, just reading the top 20 here, like 10 of these, I would consider classics. I know it's and, awesome. Like, when I look at yeah, the last a couple years, cocaine, only a couple. A little cocaine, and then you actually give that idea to a writer <laughs> to write the idea. Yeah. You're going to get some awesome Congo shit. talking monkeys. Well, right Let's now, go. number one, Bridges of Madison County. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Funniest <laughs> ones. Uh, on this Good, whole dude. list, just glancing at it, num- you're, so we're gonna start. We're, what are we trying to do? We're trying to order your, it. Your top you, three. My top your, three. Your personal top three. I know it's hard. Can Casino. I see this? We got Bad Boys. We got Mortal Kombat. Oh my the, God, Mortal the Kombat, OG. the Brady Bunch movie. So for those, Showgirls. those listening and watching at home, you can go and look up this. Are you on IMDb or what? Run the on? numbers. It's a website the numbers? about, about the, like box office numbers. Box well, office is this, numbers. Is this the? Are these all the movies that were released or just movies that made these the These are most the top money? 100 box office hits. So. Okay, so maybe some of them didn't come out the, the, necessarily ma- in 95, but did most of their bank in 95, huh? Okay. Um, man, this is tough. These are all great. No, it's fine. You only uh, you, you have 11 seconds. To get top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or at least to start picking. Box office records. I mean, I oh, yeah, think... Here we are, the numbers. The numbers. Rick's okay. Pulling it up. I'm going to go. Definitely needs to be there. Goldeneye. Okay. Is that number three? Uh, let's put that at number three. Okay. Goldeneye. Number three. Um, oh, and then probably Outbreak. <laughs> yeah. I loved Outbreak. The movie, he saves the, he saves the whole city with a helicopter. Yeah. Oh, that. while you were sleeping? I know. That's, that's a good. lot of stuff. Uh, Nine Santa months? Bullock. Yeah. You can say 12 monkeys. 12 monkeys? Uh, oh, casino. A little long, but fun. Oh, French Kiss. <laughs> French Kiss. The net. I like when the bird runs into her head. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is the movie. Not canon, but still the good. Indian in the Cupboard. I haven't thought about that movie oh, in a long time. Powder. Sucks. Tommy oh, Boy. your favorite powder? Yeah. Virtuosity. I don't know what that is. You don't know Virtuosity? Don't. Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington? Never heard of it. You haven't seen it? No. How's your family? Still dead, huh? You don't know that line? No. Oh my god! You got to go watch All Virtuosity. Right. Virtuosity. So it takes place in the future. It's uh, mm-hmm. it, to train cops. They basically create a, a program that is uh, made up of a bunch of killers and bank robbers and criminals' minds to an, make an AI essentially. Okay. And that cool. AI is played by Russell Crowe. But then through a series of 
whatever experiments, he ends up in the real world. Now the only cop who can get him is Denzel Washington, who is a cop who the major influence in his AI was someone that this guy arrested. Oh and shit! And went to the electric chair or that something. That was awesome. Ahead of its time. Okay. Um, Toy Story. I'm also gonna put that in there. Okay. Top, top three. three. Goldeneye. Toy Story so far. What's our number one? Number one. Oh man. Ooh, grumpier old men. Okay. Wow. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh okay, I just I'm just dude. I'm just I was one just thinking about the Brady Bunch movie recently. And Demon Knight, wow. Because I love that. Sure, Jan. You know that meme. <laughs> Todd Glass. Um, or is that Tropicana. is that a very Brady George, movie? George yeah, Glass. She goes George, George Tropicana, <laughs> and her and the mom goes, "Oh, is he? What did she say? Is he Cuban or something?" And and then she goes, "I mean." Glass, George Glass. Gonna, I've never seen any. I've never heard of any George Glass at my school. Uh, uh, just for the sake of oh time. My God. Sorry, there's window washing that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Window washers. Sorry. Actually, um, window. Just for the sake of time, I'm gonna say seven. Okay. Seven. Hell yeah. Number one. Then Toy Story. Then Golden Eye. Okay. But yeah. honorable mentions that should definitely be mentioned here: Die Hard with Vengeance, Heat, uh, Bad Boys. Mortal Kombat. Wow. All right. Everyone, that was James's 1995 breakdown. Hold on. Is that higher learning with uh, John Lovitz higher learning? Or no, that's how, how <laughs> hey, Rick. high. Right? Oh, I love that movie House Guest with Sinbad. You've seen that? I have seen that, yeah. What a good movie. Um, oh, my yeah. gosh. I don't think I've seen that movie since I was a kid. Well, it's always time to go back. You know what actually has a ton of great stuff? Pluto TV. Not sponsored, but... <laughs> I've been going to Pluto TV because it brings me back to the old days. You just go on there and it's just like, we're just running movies. <laughs> it's just stuff that isn't being licensed at other streaming places. So All like right. you just pop in there and you're like, what do we got on now? Some stuff no one ever cares about. Oh, so it's like oh, live. It's I not, watched it's not something like a, on there. There are some things that you can watch on demand, but mostly it's just like a TV guy that just has, but you'll just be like, all right, take me to the comedy channels. And it'll be like sitcoms, classic sitcoms, British sitcoms. Oh, cool. Oh, all kinds of stuff. Rat Race. Rat Race often sh shows up there. The but Longest it's, Yard. It's just Rat Race and the Longest Yard back to back but there's a lot of things that just like show up there that are just like not licensed other in other streaming services yeah. pretty good stuff check out Pluto TV and now not for sponsored but if they want different. to so that uh, um, that little 1995 game mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe took a little bit we're, we're gonna do a speed run of this okay. give me one uh, one more date for us to do this with oh uh, 2002 okay getting into the 2000s mm, okay. alright yeah. James we're gonna find James's top three giving movies giving you a challenge now and just so you know, here's some movies that came out that year, which are, sorry, the Veggie Tales movie oh, Jonah. Well, Kung Pao into the fist. That can't sorry be there. That cannot be right. Lord of the Rings: Two Towers, number one. Wow. Oh, oh, oh! You have it all here. That, it yeah, I'm, we're looking at the box office. Right, but we got Harry Potter. We got Spider Man. We got Star Wars. All the big franchises. Another Bond. James Bond. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely. Lilo I think I, I, Eight I, Mile. already looking at this list. It's going to be hard to beat Two Towers. Oh, That's oh, really? Definitely going to probably be number okay, one. Okay, that would not be nowhere near my top five. The preview From is what you've seen already? It's not going to be nowhere your, near your top five over... Yeah, yeah. There's way more movies in my top five than any really? of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Wow. Can you full screen that again, Jen, uh, Pat? Uh, Rick? <laughs> you got there. What yeah. would be your number one from what we're just looking at <laughs> from, here? Okay, from these top 37 movies that we're looking at right here. Uh, Catch Me If You Can came out in 2002. I like that movie yeah, a lot. Yeah, I, I would say I, I liked Minority Report a lot. I liked the original Spider-Man, definitely more than Lord of the Rings. Um, Gangs of New York. Ugh, The no, Ring. I York, hate I The I Ring. I really love. Um, Ugh. There's not, uh, there's not that much. Oh, Jet Li's Hero is awesome. I mean, I've seen that, yeah. yeah. Rocks. That's good. I don't know that, that I put it over two towers. You don't I, like I Made, Ma Made in Manhattan? Go... Ralph Fiennes? I do not like Made in Manhattan. <laughs> I go... Even though it is John Hughes, right? I think. Two towers. Made in Manhattan. Oh, was it? Yeah, I, I think that's I... one of John Hughes' last movies. Oh, okay. I think. Uh, two towers, Spider-Man. And then... Uh, I probably even like Born Identity more than Lord uh, Two not, Towers. The first Born, no way. Born Supremacy is is the only one out of all those movies that I actually like. They keep going a little down. Uh, what about uh, Snow Dogs? 
It's no dog. So, oh, I, about Schmidt rocks. Slower, but you time know. Time machine is that the Guy Pierce time machine? Oh, Rain yeah. of Fire. Oh, Jack has the movie. Jack has Jack the movie. Has the movie. All right, yeah. Jack has the movie. There. Bottom of the my, bottom of my list would probably be. Can you go up a little bit? The worst movie out of all these here. Oh, we're doing worse. Is gonna be Chicago. Really? Yeah. You mean the best picture of that year? Yeah. <laughs> is the worst that movie. Your sucked. worst movie? That movie sucked. <laughs> oh, okay. He I, I, had it coming. I, I like the musical, but I thought the movie sucked. Ninety percent of it was just filming up on a stage, and I was like, "What is the point of adapting it into a different medium if you're just going to build a stage?" Well, there's and two film different. You know, it's in their heads. Remember, they're like, "There's the real world, oh and there's the musical inside their heads." It it's convey. kind of the divine cool secrets concept. of the Yaya sisterhood. Mm, I'm more of a traveling pants. Man. Yeah, I love the Count of Monte Cristo remake from that year. Collateral damage. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Remember yeah, that? No one does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, Crossroads with Bernie Spears. Blue Crush. I never yeah. saw it, but I know that it's just the one of three women in Hot a bikini. Hot chick. Um, okay, well. Yeah. I think we've oh, Swim oh, Fan. There we go. There's my, there's my number one. E2 Mama Tambien. E2 Tambien. Mama Tambien. That's yeah. by yeah. far the best movie on this list. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and it's like the 98th most high just, grossing. Just remember, with enough time and enough sexual energy, any woman can convince two hetero men to sleep <laughs> with each other. <laughs> is that the lesson that's, that you learned? That's the theme. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your number one or, from 2001? Two Towers. Two Towers. 2002, right? That was 2002? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Two Towers. Yeah, and you hated Chicago. Interesting. And Chicago, no. Okay. The last one. Well, everyone, we're getting to the end of this. This is going to be a little shorter pod today. Um, but I did have a... Um, I did want to play another game with you. A James game, if you will. Oh, it's all games. James okay. game. A James, James game. James games. Okay. Now, James... There's, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's a shit ton of people named James out there. Are there? Yes, there are. So we're going to play a little game. Um, I don't know anybody else. Rick, if possible, I don't know if it is possible for you, but I was going to maybe like uh, uh, time, see how how fast James could do this. Basically, I'm going to, without saying parts of their names, I I was going to very quickly describe these Jameses and Mm -hmm. see how many Jameses you can... uh, uh, You can get. All right. To be fair, just prefacing this. Yes. Uh, most other Jameses don't exist to me because I like to think of myself as the, 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 solo the one. James. Yeah, yeah. The one James. Well, so the one James. I, 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 I'd be better off with other names just because they're not James. But okay. we'll try. I'll give, me, I'll give my try. Yeah. Now, now part of this is going to be, I guess, uh, uh, testing you on how fast you can get these. But I guess part of it is also going to be seeing how well, well I can, you describe can describe these them, Jameses. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of a, a double uh, uh, okay. game here. All right. Um, oh wow, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stop. Watch stop, there. Stop. Watch. Ready to go. R- Rick. Yep. I'm ready, ready to go. Okay. Here this. we go. Um, okay. Wait. Where do I start? As soon as you end the uh, question, or as soon as you well, start? The second I say go, we're gonna see how long. We're gonna speed run. We're factoring in the time. This of is a James it's, it's, speed it's run. It's not. It's we can't formally submit this time because it's, we. Yeah. No. Too many variables. We will be Got submitting it. this to Twin Galaxies right after the podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. You, you th- this James died in a motorcycle crash. James uh James Dean. Good. Uh Luke, I am your father. James Earl Jones. Yes. Uh his 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 talk show just ended. James Corden. Uh good. Uh I feel good. James Brown. Good. Uh uh in and uh, James Hendrix. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, uh, James Hetfield. Good. Okay. Um uh founding father of our country. Uh, James James Madison. Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, plays basketball and is in the finals right now. LeBron James. Nope, not that. Well, that's a good one, but no, he has a big beard. Uh, he's on, I believe, the Sixers. Skip. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, popular <laughs> author. He like freelance. He like has a whole empire. He's in airport bookshelves. Uh, what kind of books does he write? Just really like mainstream. Uh, Skip. Shitty ones. Okay, sorry. Okay, Sopranos. Oh, uh, James Gandolfini. G- good. Godfather. Uh, Godfather. Gets, gets gunned down in Godfather. Oh, James Conn. Yep. Uh, 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 Videodrome. No. Uh, James Woods. Yep, okay, good. Um, uh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never Skip. end. Piano guy uh, from the 70s. He's kind of like long hair and uh, plays piano. Skip. God damn it. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 babe. Uh, uh, James that'll Cromwell. Do, that'll do pick. Okay, good. Uh, uh, Dawson's Creek. Uh, James Vanderbeek. Yes. Oh, I wanted to play okay. for a uh, second. Okay. Inside the <laughs> wow. Actors Studio. Oh, uh, James Lipton. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
uh, Tommy Gun, uh, uh, White Lightning, uh, James uh, Cagney. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a Cajun politics man, and I, I oh uh, I'm the a, bald guy. Yep, the bald guy. James, I'm a bald guy. what's his uh, name? Bill Clinton, uh, all the way to the to the White House. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I, skip, come skip. On. I knew he's a bald. Yeah. I knew he's a bald. James guy. Carvel. James Carvel. Uh, uh, right, uh, right yeah. the ice cream. Uh, Thanos or Thanos's dad. James Brolin? Yes, James Brolin. Yes. Uh uh sorry, getting to the end what? here. Um Simpsons. Uh Simpsons director, producer. Also produced ter- terms of endearment, broadcast news. He's a director. He's awesome. No, uh, you don't know. No, no, no. James L. Brooks, sorry. Oh, James uh, L. Brooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're doing so good. Sorry. Uh the guy you were talking about earlier, he you know James the, Stewart. Yeah, the James Stewart. Yeah, we're doing great. Lindsay, you can uh, uh pipe in at any moment. Uh, can I include Jimmy's? He what? already is. What? Uh, well, He's already doing Jimmy. Have we done Jimmy's. a Jimmy? We haven't done a Jimmy yet. Well, Jimmy Stewart. Well, don't call him Jimmy. but his uh, name, his oh, birth I'll name call is him James. Jimmy. Yeah. Okay, he has a late night talk show. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, James Fallon is James. And? James Kimmel. All right. Uh, is that their real names? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no one is named Jimmy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Seth Rogen's old best friend's brother. Seth Rogen's. James Franco. Oh, but Dave? Yes. <laughs> Franco? Oh, oh, wait, no. <laughs> I reversed that. I was thinking of Dave Franco. Okay, never mind. Think, that, that yeah, was yeah, stupid. Yeah, okay, all right. That was stupid. The old best friend thing. Okay, uh, sex, lies, and videotapes. Uh, uh, and also, uh, Avengers 2, bad guy. Come on, baby. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. From uh, The Secretary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, What's that's the name? best movie he's ever been in. You're right. Uh, James. Uh, 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 playing Cards. He's in The Office. Playing Cards. He's in The Office, Lindsay. What is, he what? took over for Michael James Scott. James Spader? Yeah. James Spader. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, Thank ma- you. Makeup influencer on Twitter and stuff. I know. You no, know. YouTube. YouTube, sure. James Charles. Okay, James, James Charles. James Charles. Yeah. Avatar. James Cameron. Hell yeah. You're doing so good, James. Am I? Um, um, getting to the end here. 11th president. Uh, James James Madison again? No. no. James. Mon- James Monroe? I don't no. know. I don't James. That is a founding father, though. No, uh, James Polk. Okay, 15th president. James K. Polk. Okay. <laughs> 15th president. You have three Jameses as presidents. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe more maybe, maybe coming more, soon. Honestly, fifteenth uh, president. You're not going to get this. This is before Lincoln. Maybe you will. I don't know. It was before Lincoln, right? Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. Don't Lionel care. Skip. James Buchanan. Ah, uh, yes, and, James Buchanan. Uh, so memorable. Twentieth president. Uh, also a fat cat who loves lasagna. James mm. Garfield. Yes. Okay, go. and then we're getting to the very end here. What are okay? The, Probably worst two Jameses, in my opinion. Okay. I don't know. There's All probably right. a lot more, yep. but uh, 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 shot Martin Luther King. I don't know. James Earl Ray. Well, oh, the, the or FBI. the FBI. Yeah, that's good. The one, CIA. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's that dude who dressed up like the Joker. Uh, the Jack Queen. No, I shouldn't even talk about that guy. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> People that you don't think are named James. This is the very, th- these are the trick oh. ones. Okay. Do I have to go uh, back to the five skipped? minutes here? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, uh, so, okay. The last couple, uh, uh, how do I say this? I You're know. never going to get this, okay. but uh, uh, Iggy Pop. What's his real name? Oh, I don't know. James. <laughs> James Osterberg. And, uh, I knew it was James. Uh, uh, and then um, LL Cool J. It's uh, James. Ladies love Cool James. James Smith. James All right. Smith. Well, there we go, everyone. Thank you for very much for playing James Speed Runs James. Can't wait for the um, Lindsay Speed Run. Did, so that, yeah, so a... is my time. I should just skip them all. Because if I can skip them all, unless I get a, a time penalty for the ones that I skip. Yeah, the whole entire five game. Seconds uh, per penal- per the, skip. the way we gamified this was very poorly thought out. Mm-hmm. Not, uh, whatever. I just really wanted to see how fast you could do all that. Well, but I yeah. guess your record's five minutes and 40 seconds. All right. You didn't Sounds get good. a bunch of them, and I don't know really how we'll do with that, but. Just uh, we're still, I we're, challenge you at home. Yeah. If you could be five minutes and 40 seconds of arbitrarily answering some and skipping others. <laughs> the points are useless. Yeah. They're totally made then up. Then you can submit it to Twin Galaxies and see if you can beat James's record. Can you take longer or faster? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, 
It's up to you. <laughs> anyway, this has been a great James uh, movie discussion pod. Um, I had a lot of fun. Anything you want to say, James, to the people? Before no, when we... am I coming back on to do the one about me? The one that's actually... I would me. love for you to come back on, you know? Um, I'm busy that week, months. though. Oh, a couple months? Yeah. Okay, well, busy February to now is what? That was like four months? Yeah. So, I guess... All right, I'll see you in... October. We'll talk about for TV, Halloween. TV shows before that. Yeah, we'll talk oh, about yeah, TV yeah. Shows. We'll have, TV shows. Yeah, and you can come in and rate the Lindsay's next time. Okay. At some point. All right, that should I'll, be easy. Yeah, that'll be easy. All right, everyone, appreciate your time. Thanks for watching, and see you next week on the Funhouse Podcast.